Hey guys, Lincoln here. Today I want to talk about JavaScript arrays and how you're using to store a list of items and access those items later by their index or by looping over the entire array. Let's get started. Okay guys, first things first. We need to make an array and then store some items in it. So let's do that. Let's say, let some numbers equal one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we have an array of numbers. So we can now console.log to print out any of these items in the array. So let's do the first item. In JavaScript and most programming languages, the first index of an array is always zero. So when you're accessing indexes in an array, remember that you are starting at zero and not one. So the first item in our array, numbers, is going to be at index zero. So we print that out, we can see that it prints out one. Now, let's try to get the second item. That index would be one, which prints out two over here. So now let's try to get ourselves the last index, the last item. So we know that we have, we're counting from one to six. So our last index is gonna be five and that prints out six. Now, that's how you access individual items of the array. If you wanna access, wanna print out the entire array, just remove the index and it prints out everything. So later on, you can, you can take your array and pass it to some function, print numbers, the array, and take the array, let's call it numbers, as we have up there, and print it out and say console.log numbers. So this will print out all of our numbers, but first we have to actually call call that with numbers. So we're calling this function print numbers with our numbers array up here, passing it here and printing it out here. We can we can also pass some other array if we want and it'll print it out, but we're focusing on our array that we defined up here. So we're gonna pass in our numbers and we can call this argument in three one. So let's call it nums. And now that we see how to print out the entire array, let's print out just two of them. So we'll print out the first one, the first items, and first item, and we'll print out the second item. So that prints out one and two. But what if we want to print out all of the items on a separate line? In order to do that, we have to loop over the array for every single item in the array and print out each one individually. So we do that by using a for loop in JavaScript. And the for loop goes like this. You write for, then you start with some iterator. The iterator we're gonna call i. And i will start at zero. So we're gonna, we're gonna start at zero, and we're gonna go up until i is, or as long as i is less than the length, of our array. And we're gonna increase i by one every time we, we go through the array. Now that we have our for loop defined, we're gonna, it says we're gonna start at i, which is zero. So long as i is less than the length of the array, which in this case is six, we're going to, we're gonna loop through and increase i by one every single time. Plus plus means increase by one. Increase the number i by one each time. Okay, so now that we have our for loop and we know how i plus plus works, let's take a look at how we can print out each element as we loop through the array one element at a time. So first we will get the current number current 
number, and that is equal to numbers, nums, at the index i. So the first time I will be 0, the second time I will be 1, and so on until 5, because that's when i will be less than i, which will be 5, will be less than numbers.length, which is 6. So now that we have that current number, as we loop through, we can print it out and see what happens. And as you can see, it prints out 1, and then 2, and then 3, 4, 5, 6. So it goes i is 0, and then i is 1, i is 2, 3, 4, 5. And since 5 is less than 6, numbers.length, it stops, it stops after it prints out 6. So, what if we try to, what if we made this plus 1? So it prints out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and that's index 5 right here. Then it tries to go again to index 6 because we added that plus 1. And then it reaches, it tries to access that number here, which will be after 6 here. And that prints out on defined because there is, there is no element at index 6 of this array because there's only 5 indexes. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That's how you loop through an array and print and access each element one by one. You can do a whole lot of other things with the element once you have it. This is just a simple print to the console, but you can you can do other operations like use that number to play the next card in your card game or create some random number if you're if you're running a random number generator or do some simple math such as uh, multiply by 2. So now there's an error of course because undefined times 2 is broken. So we got to this is 1 times 2, 2 times 2, 2 times 3, 2 times 4, 2 times 5, and 2 times 6 as, as we requested right here. So we've seen exactly how to loop over an array one by one through each element until the end of the array. But what if we want to loop through the array and only get to say three of the elements and then stop there, right? We can do exactly that. But first let's see what happens. Let's, let's print console.log done right here after, we, after we're done with the array. And let's remove this times two. So we print out all of our numbers and then we say we're done right here. So now we're at this point, we're going through the entire array. But what if we want to stop at the third, the third element at index two? We can do exactly that. We can use an if statement and say if i is greater than is equal to two, then break. And what that says is once we once we reach index two, exit the for loop and continue on with the program. So at this point, we skip this line and we end the for loop. And now we're here because we've broken. So let's let's make that clearer. You can see that right here. We printed one, we printed two, and then we printed done. Right? If we remove this, you will see we'll go back to printing out everything and then done. We put this back, it only prints out one and two, and then it's done because it stops it stops at index two, zero, one, two. We don't get to this point. So what if we want to stop at the first after the first index? It only prints out one. So now we've seen how to break out of a for loop as we iterate over an array in JavaScript. But what if we want to skip a number at index? and continue to the next index without doing anything. So right now, we are breaking that index two and not printing out that element. So once we remove this, we will print out all the numbers. But what if we want to skip the, the third number in the array at index two? We can say if i is equal 
to 2, then continue. Continue looping. Do not, do not go to the next line of this block of code. Stop here and increase i and go to the, to the next index. So as you can see, we print out 1, 2, we skip 3 because that's what's at index 2 right here, 0, 1, 2. And we, then we go to index 3 and print out 4, and then 5, and then 6, and then we're done. So that's how you would access in the elements of an array using the for loop. Now we know how to access individual elements. So what if we want to change an element at a certain index? Let's do exactly that. Let's change the index, the element at index 0, and make that equal to 1. Now, if we print out the new value, numbers at 0, index 0, it prints out 1. So we've gone ahead, printed out the original value, which is 1, at index 0, and then we change that to be the string 1. And we printed that out, and it printed out exactly that. So we have changed the value of the element at index 0 in the array. So we can do the same thing for any other element. So let's change the, index, the value at index 1. And index 1 was originally 2. We changed it to be 2. And it prints out 2 because that's what we changed it to. So now we know exactly how to change a element, a v the value of an element at an index. So now let's see how we can push an element onto the array. So we have our original array that looks like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. What if you want to add an element to that array? We can do numbers.push to push it onto the array. Let's push 7. And now if we print out numbers again, it prints out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 because we pushed it on. And we can keep going. We can keep pushing. We can push on 8 if we want to. And now it prints out 1 through 8. And we then we can even push on another anything else we want. You can even push push on an object. Because why not? So let's push on an object and give it a ID or let's give this object a name and the name will be Buddy. And if we print it out, we print out the new array or the same array but with the new item on it. It prints out one, one through eight, and then our last element is that object with that name buddy. We can even push on a, we can even push on another array. Hi, bye. And then we print that out. Oops, we print that out. And it prints out one through eight, our, our object buddy, and a new that new array. Hi and bye. We can even push on a function if we want to. Of course, gotta end that. Oops, what did I do wrong? Okay. So now it prints out one through eight plus our object, our array, and that function. So now that we have that function in there, let's see how we can access that function and use it. So if we access numbers, and I believe well, because it's the last element in the array, we can actually just do numbers dot length minus one, and then console dot log i. And let's get rid of all of these other things. And we can see that it prints out 
Oops, I misspelled console. So now we're printing out the last element in the array, which is at the length of the array minus one, because again, we start at index zero in arrays. So what if we want to access that function and actually call it? Let's get rid of this and print out, or we don't have to print it out, let's just call it. We can call that function. You push this function onto your, onto your array, so we can actually just call it. And it prints out, hello. I am in the function. Just like that. So now we see exactly how to access an element in an array. And if, it, and if it's a function, we can use it just as a function. So let's just make this even clearer and, and set this to a, value of a variable. The function equals that. And then we can call the function. Just like that. And if we want, we can access the second to last element and print that out. The second to last element. And we have to change this name. And now we have six because six is the second to last element in the array. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we pushed on this function, which is now the last element. And six is the second to last element. And if we want to remove an element from the array, we can just do numbers dot shift. Or if we want to remove the first element from the array, we can do numbers dot shift. And then just console dot log numbers. And you can see that one is no longer in the array because we removed the, we shifted the array over by one and we moved the first element. So now it starts at two, three, four, five, six, and then our function. So now what if we want to remove the last element? All we have to do is call numbers.pop. And that will remove the last element. We can print out the new array. Why do I keep spelling this wrong? console.log, the new array, or the updated array, same array. And now it's, before it was two, three, four, five, six, and that function at the end. And then, because we popped off that last element, it's just now two, three, four, five, six. There's a lot more you can do with arrays. If you look at all these functions, you can, you can, filter the array, you can check if it includes something, you can get the length of the array, and there's so much more you can do. So look through these look through these functions and play around with them and see what what more powerful tools JavaScript arrays have in store for you. So now we know how to create arrays in JavaScript, access individual items of that array, loop through the array using the for loop, add elements to the array by pushing remove elements by popping in on shift and shifting. And we know that there are so many more built-in methods that we can use to manipulate and work with JavaScript arrays. If you liked the video, please give me a like and subscribe for future videos. And if you have any ideas for what we should cover next, please leave a comment below and I will get to it as soon as possible. Thank you guys.